Let's get ready to talk football and sport ball and whatever football sport you like because it's time for Football Sunday. It's February 2nd when I'm making this. I don't know when it's going to be uploaded, maybe the 3rd or the 4th or Super Bowl Sunday. Either way, it's a podcast, JP Podcast, and that's what you're listening to right now on YouTube. Okay, here we go. Let's start down with the talking. As I said before, in sports, I love sports. I'm going to go to college for broadcasting, and I would love to get into the sport area of broadcasting. Now, this is where I get super nerdy about sports, and um, I wasn't really uh, planning on actually making podcasts about sports because who wants to listen to me ramble? Well, I, I could just make my own channel about sports, but um, you know, might as well you know start talking about it, especially for a big game like the Super Bowl. So let's look up at our matchups for this year's Super Bowl. And if you don't know football, um, I guess I could kind of teach you football one on one with JP. So 100 yards in a football field, technically 100, technically 120, because the end zones are 10 yards each. So Every time you start up, every time you have the football, it's a first down and 10. But before the first down and 10, there's a kickoff from the 35 yard line. You kick the ball as far as you can. If it goes out of bounds, it's, it, it's a penalty and the ball gets placed on the 40 yard line and you go from there. But if the ball is inside, inside the football field, you pick it up. And if you don't pick it up, if the team that kicked it picks it up before you, um, it's called an onside kick or an onside recover, and that team gets the ball, basically. Basically, if any time the team that's kicking it gets the ball, they get the ball, unless it goes past 10 yards. As I said before, I'm going to get really nerdy into this video, and if you don't understand football, it's okay. I'm just going to talk football for like the next 20 minutes because I love sports. I love NFL. I love every sport except for golf, and if I get placed in golf and ESPN, I swear to God. Speaking of which... I don't really care where I go in my life, whether it be Fox, uh, ESPN, NBC. I just want to be a part of a sports broadcasting network or a network in general. Okay, so let's get down to the facts here. So when you have the football, it's a first down and 10 wherever you go. And if you get the ball, if the ball goes into the end zone, you can take a kneel, you can run out of bounds, um, left, right, or backwards, and you'll be your ball will be spotted on the 25-yard line. Last year, it used to be the 20-yard line, but... um. They changed the rule because of how many injuries were happening in the NFL. Uh, one of the one of the I'm a Packer fan. One of the Packers uh, wide receivers, Randall Cobb, he actually uh, broke a leg on a uh, on a return one year. I think it was his return. I don't remember what it was, but he broke his leg, and that's like, ooh, we should probably do something about that. So they changed it to the 25 yard line, so there'd be less injuries. And I think that happened. I mean, it happened. I think. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so you have the football, the first down and 10, you have to get 10 yards within four plays. It's usually three plays, and then you punt the ball, or you can kick a field goal, which, I, it, it, if you're watching this video, I don't have to explain everything, but field goal is kicking a ball through the, the goal post. It has to go through the middle. It can't go left or right on, on, on the outside of it, or else it's no good. And yeah, whatever. And and, and the ball gets pla- and the ball gets placed on wherever you kick the. Never mind. Okay, so football time. Okay, we have the New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I'm a Packer fan, and the Packers lost the Falcons in a blowout. I was kind of upset, but I was okay with it because the Packers had a great run that year. They beat the Cowboys. They beat the Giants, who was one of the best defenses in the league. I think. I think uh, I think um, this is going to be a great game. Patriots have something to prove. Tom Brady has something to prove. He is, I think he's a f- uh, five-time winning Super Bowl champion. Is he four or five? I think, uh, let's see. Let me tell this in. Tom Brady, Super Bowls. I'm going to find out how many he has. I think he has five. Oh, yeah, six. Okay. He has six. So he can get, wait, wait, hold on. No, he has four. Because he lost two, which were both against the Giants. I looked up Super Bowl wins, and it said six, but it, it was Super Bowl starts. But, yeah, so that means Tom Brady has started in the most Super Bowls of all time. And if he wins, he wins the most of all time, which is pretty cool. Um, in my opinion, uh, if I had to go with the odd makers, you would say the Patriots, right? Because the Patriots have a great offense. They have I – mean, it's, it's not suspect, but, I mean, it's – better than the Packers defense um I respect the the Patriots defensive line actually one of my uh one of my teachers is a Patriots uh fan and he kind of explained to me um 
why why their defense has been super good and why their offensive line has been good. I believe the offensive offensive line coach for the Patriots, I think he retired and the coach came back. And that that, that made their offensive line be a lot better this year. And I think uh he told me that it's 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 a fact that only New England fans really know about. I guess I know it now as well. Um yeah, but the person that uh that, that talks to me about football, one of my teachers, he's actually a substitute, but uh he might be on this podcast once or twice, you know, maybe in the next in, in this year because he knows his football and uh you know, talking to him is pretty cool and we could, we could have like a like a first take or a undisputed talk where we talk five sports in an hour or two hours, we'll just talk for an hour or two hours about five different topics of sports. Because I know more about football and basketball. I'm trying to get into baseball and hockey, especially hockey, because the college that I'm looking into, uh, it, it's a big hockey school. So, yeah. Um, also, um, I, I mean, i got to get into other sports, too. I actually like lacrosse. Um, golf, eh, I'll watch it live, but I wouldn't, li- I wouldn't spend my days watching it on TV. I know some people love it, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Uh, I know I'm gonna have to be once I'm in like, like a sports show or whatever. Um, I'm into. I'm getting more into WWE, which is really weird because it's fake and everything. But um, one, of my, one of my best friends likes the WWE, so I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'll watch. I'll watch a few things. I actually watched the Royal Rumble, and I didn't know who any of these people were. All I knew who all I knew was John Cena. And I knew the people who made booty flakes. That's all I knew. And then I, and I found out all these people's names, and I got really happy about it because I'm like, oh, sweet, another sport, cool. Um, uh, what is it called? The fighting, f- fuck, f- f- UFC, wow. Yeah, I know that. I know there's like a discussion on Pacquiao and Mayweather. Not, no, Pacquiao and Pacquiao and Mayweather. That was stupid. That was a stupid fight. Ugh, I don't even want to get into that. But we have McGregor and Mayweather, and they're like, they've been trash talking for the past like few months, and they're like, I could beat you in a fight, and McGregor's like, bitch, please, all you do is throw punches. I actually kick and throw punches, and I'm like, eh. I think McGregor would win only because you can actually, he's known for kicking and stuff, and Mayweather only punches, even though he has a pretty wicked punch. I know this is about football and not not freaking, I don't even know what that's fucking called. All right, let's get into the regular talks now. Okay, so we have the Falcons and the Patriots. The Falcons offense, I'm going to say right here, it's one of the best I've ever seen. Not ever seen. Well, I'm only 18, and the offense is the best I've seen watching football. I've been watching football since I was, like, 10. So, I mean, eh, maybe 9. No, 10. Well, technically 7 because I used to go to the dentist, and I had a dentist person not I had what are they called a nurse dentist I don't know what they're called but she's like what team do you like and I'm like New York team what team has what team is in New York the Jets and I'm like I like the Jets and also one time in Thanksgiving I saw the Cowboys and, and I liked white and blue together and I'm like the Cowboys and the Jets and she's like oh me too honey and I'm like okay and she's like I love Tony Romo <laughs> and I'm like yeah who's that because I don't watch fo- I didn't watch football at the time but now looking back on what I said, I'm like, if I saw her now and I told her where I am today, uh, I think uh, she'd be a little surprised because I'm, I'm not a Jets fan, not even close, and I'm not even close to a Cowboy fan, even though I do respect the rookies this year and Ezekiel Elliott and uh, and Dak Prescott. Um, so, yeah, we're about nine minutes in, uh, so I think we should get on to the actual picks and why they're going to win the Super Bowl. Even though all I've said, I've said the Patriots have the best. I think the Patriots have the best team overall. However, even though they have Tom Brady, I'm picking the Falcons to win the Super Bowl this year. Not because I don't like Tom Brady. Hey, I hate the Falcons. I mean, I don't hate them, but they beat the Packers, and that's my favorite team. They've been my favorite team for so long. Now, why would I pick the Falcons to win? Even though I said the Patriots have a complete team, I think the Falcons do as well. If you look at their defense, their quarterbacks are very prospect. Um, there is a uh, one-year player coming out. I think I don't. When I want to say LSU, his last name is Ramsey. I think. No, no, it's Jalen Collins. I think his name is. I think. It, let me look it up right now. I think it is Jalen Collins. 
Let's look it up here. Uh, I think it's Jalen Collins. Maybe it's not. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I'm gonna look, I'm looking this up on the internet. Hold on. Falcons uh, cornerback. Okay, yeah, it's Jalen Collins. Okay, he's from LSU. Wow, good job, me. <laughs> Go. All right, so we have people like uh, Robert Alford and Desmond Trufant. That's that's suspect, right? I don't believe so. I think I think they're gonna step up. I think they will. They have a great defensive line as well. Um, I just I hate to disrespect the Patriots, cause no matter what, it's the game of football is all about momentum, and I've said that for a long time. And look at the Packers. They were up twenty-one to three on the Cowboys, and that's how they won that game. Even though the Packers did lead them back to almost lose that game, the Cowboys came back, and they had that momentum, and they kept scoring and scoring and scoring. The Packers couldn't score, but they kept scoring. And they almost won the game because of momentum. And I learned this in high school football as well. We played we played one of the best teams in, in, in our state, and we could have been up 14-0. to And imagine what could have happened at that game if we were 14-0. to but no, we had we had crucial turnovers in the game, which made them get the ball back. And when you turn over the football, usually there's going to be some points out of it. And that's what happened against the Falcons. That's what happened against the high school football team of my own. And that's what might happen in the Super Bowl. Look for that. Turnovers are the most important thing in football. Besides your offensive line and your quarterback, that is the most important thing of all. Fourth, more important, most important are your defensive linemen because you have to get to the quarterback. And let me tell you, even if you have the best corners in the league, like the Broncos, for example, if you can't get that quarterback, that quarterback will make you regret it. He'll get outside the pocket. He'll throw for yards. He'll run for yards. He'll find someone open, whether it be on the sideline like Jared Cook and Aaron Rodgers in the last few seconds of the Cowboys game because of that great protection. Or it could happen in a Super Bowl. Tom Brady, for the first time in a long time, gets out of the pocket, looks for an open receiver, and finds him. Imagine that. That's because the Falcons' defensive rushers, even though they're great. Let's just say, for instance, they didn't get through. Tom Brady, if you give him more than five seconds, he's going to find someone. The, the Patriots' playbook is made where Tom Brady says, I'm going to find one receiver. I'm picking him out before the play starts. He is my guy. I'm separating my tight ends, I'm separating my wideouts to go different directions while I pick one wide receiver to go a certain way, and I'm picking him. An underrated year for Tom Brady, one, because he missed four games. Second, he didn't have Rob Gronkowski. Tight ends are the most important receivers in the game. I don't care what anyone says, but if you look at Tom Brady's stats with Rob Gronkowski and without him, it makes a somewhat big difference. Maybe it's a small difference. But if you look at Aaron Rodgers, I know I'm, I, I'm a Packer fan. I'm going to talk a lot about Aaron Rodgers. But we're going to go to Aaron Rodgers quick. When Jermichael Finley was on the Packers, they were a great team. They won the Super Bowl with him. He was a great wide out. And he, he could play wide out. He was a tight end that could play wide receiver. He was a big guy. He was fast. He could block. And that's the best thing about Rob Gronkowski and Martellus Bennett for the Patriots. They can block and they could they can they can pass protect they can block for running and they can run and catch the football. And that's a great thing to have with these Patriots. Without Rob Gronkowski, I think they could still win because Martellus Bennett he's still pretty good. He is injured. And I think he's gonna play. Yeah, he's had two weeks to rest. I think he's gonna be fine uh, on Sunday. But if he plays, look for Martellus Bennett to get open. Because Marte uh, tw tight ends are usually covered by either the outside linebacker or the inside linebacker. And most likely, they're going to get open. Martellus Bennett is pretty fast. And also, in this year in fantasy, he got you a lot of points. And I only know that because I had Rob Gonkowski and he got injured. I, I drafted him in my second round pick. And uh, that and it, was not, it was not pretty. I uh, had a pretty bad year. I drafted, uh, I drafted Todd Gurley first over, uh, third, third overall. For my first pick, that didn't turn out good. That eh, Rob Gronkowski didn't turn out good. And I think in the fifth round, I picked Doug Martin, and that didn't go out good. I had a pretty crappy season because of my injuries, and that's something that's also important, or injuries. Look at the Falcons. They have literally two injuries on the injury report. That is awesome. 
because usually injuries make a huge factor, and Patriots missing missing Rob Gronkowski. They lost Vince Wilfork to the Houston Texans. I know without him, they've been doing pretty good. But with him, he was great. They cut. Uh, who did they? Who did the Patriots cut onto the Browns? Look that up. I think it was. Col- I don't remember what his last name was. Jamie Collins, that's who it was. They traded Jamie Collins, who was a great player, for a third-round draft pick. I mean, uh, I think I think uh, I think he went rogue, which means uh, uh, not paying attention to your playbook. I th- Xavier Xavier Rhodes for the Vikings did that as well, where the defensive coordinator gives you a job and you don't do that job, and. Uh, Look at the Patriots. The Patriots have a great organization, and they traded a great player. So that could happen to anybody. And uh, and, and that's, that's that's another thing. Uh, Patriots they have a they have a great coach, um, Bill Belichick, and uh, I think he coaches his players pretty well. And I think uh, even I, I mean it's as I said before, it's going to be a great game. I just think, at a personal standpoint, Tom Brady wants another Super Bowl, and I think he might get it. I think he can. He will. And as I said before, it's hard to determine this game because the playoffs this year has sucked. Like all the all the margins of winning has been so it's been so wide, except for the Packer games, besides the Falcons. But if you look at all the games, they were pretty bad. So um, yeah, this field's been going on a little bit too long now. So I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna name someone who's gonna win. It's, all right, so. Turnover batter, turnover batter, turnover battle is super important, and I think who wins the turnover battle will win the game, and I think it's gonna be a, pr- a pretty close game. I'm gonna say the Falcons are gonna win this game. Whew. This, is, this is a pretty, it's pretty sweet. This is pretty close. Patriots are known for going forward a lot. I don't think they're gonna score many field goals. I don't think they're gonna. Kick, the only way they would kick a field goal is in the early first quarter or second. I don't see them ever. I don't really see them field goaling it, especially if it's a close game and their defense isn't playing good. It's something to think about as well. Oh uh, boy, Falcons have a really, really suspect uh, cornerback. Cornerbacks, should I say? I don't know. Hmm. I'm gonna say Falcons win. Hmm. Twenty-seven to twenty-three. I, I, that's a hard score to predict. Um, I, I think the pa- Patriots are going to put up points no matter what. Um, will the Falcons? Yeah, I'm sure they will. I'm going to give you two scores. If the Falcons win, it's going to be super close. It's 27 to 23. Why not? But if the Patriots win, I think it's going to be uh, a little bit higher scoring. I'm going to say 34 to 21 for the Patriots. If they want, if they would win, it'd be 34 to 21. All right. So that's about it for this uh, this segment of the JP Podcast for sports. And if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you want some more content. I make uh, podcasts whenever I feel like it, which has been once a week. Uh, there'll be two this week, and uh, yeah, because it's Super Bowl, and I want to keep another topic set and ready. So yeah. All right, guys. If you, uh, so yeah, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll be back maybe with some more sports. And the Super Bowl predictions are probably wrong. I talk a lot. I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to get some words out and maybe you know get ready for the future. So my name is JP. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. Win is gonna be super.